like I always say to my colleague, better we do it online than not to do it at all. But we do we need to do it properly. And at the same time, as we all know, online training has also got its own advantages in terms of time, money, number of participants, etc. So much saving that we can get. In terms of effectiveness, it is up to us, the trainer and the participants, to make it as effective as possible. I know nobody sees you, whether you concentrate or whether you perkenate tarik during my speech, but it is up to you. The more you focus and concentrate during this training, the more benefit that you will get. Every word, every example that I share during this meeting is very important. Should you miss any of them, the percentage of gain that you may receive after this training will keep on decreasing. This is what we call self-discipline. The impact is that if uh, we CM goes and audit you, even though there is something that I've already said during this training, you might miss it. And as a result, you're unable to answer my question during audit. I really hope through this training, at room operator staffs, will know how to close our future NCR, specifically on SMS and CRs or findings. So please take grab this opportunity wisely. If you have any question, please raise them on our chat box. You know how to write in the chat box. My staff will list them down and I will try to answer them if we got time. So since the tendency to get distracted is high, for an online training, I have designed the timing differently from normal face-to-face -face training. That is, every session only lasts maximum one hour. After this, I will go through the timetable. Eh? Every session only lasts maximum one hour. So you have to listen to my speech only one hour and then you get a break for half an hour and then one hour. So I think quite relaxing. Eh? And you are given half an hour break between every session except for lunch break, that will be one hour duration. During the break, you can have your coffee or tetarik, maybe oxygen to enable your eyes to stand my chalote for the next one hour. Or maybe if we have enough time, there will be group discussion session arranged for you. I guess everybody already aware that you are already divided into groups eh? and we have designed online whiteboards or Google Jamboard for every group. I guess many of you have already tried to write something on the board during weekend. If you still have problem in entering, please uh, contact us through chat box. Eh? We will help you. I hope everybody familiar how Google Jamboard works. Let me brief a little bit. It is an online whiteboard. It means that you can write or draw anything simultaneously on the same board. That is why it is good for group discussion. I will paste the assignment for each group on your respective whiteboard or Jamboard. If you go to the Jamboard now, your group Jamboard, my staff already paste down uh, the assignment for you today. So you can go now or I advise not to go now lah, or else you have problem with internet, you cannot go back to this conversation. If anybody still do not know their group and link for the Jamboard, you may ask Puan Ellie for MHB staff and respective person in charge for other companies. For example, for ASPA, Mr. Zaki, for uh, Silmex, Mr. Uh, Azrul, eh? uh, for Snipe, for Pharmaceutical, Cik Atika, etc. So please contact them. They know how for you to go to the link. Eh? Okay, the groups will be shown in this slide. After this, I will go through uh, the group. If we have time for group discussion, you can go to your respective group chat room. Okay, let me check. Okay, uh, I, I guess everybody have breakout rooms eh, on your bottom of your screen down there. So uh, if you push it, if you press this button, I think you will be uh, given opportunity to select which group you are going to go. So this is another feature of Zoom. Lah. So I would advise not to do it now, or else if you go to that room, it's very <laughs> difficult for you to get back to this main room. Eh? But I hope everybody have a uh, breakout rooms punya button down there. Okay. Uh, Zarif, we can confirm eh? I, I can see. So I hope everybody see breakout, breakout rooms 
on your bottom side. So if you go for group discussion, please press that button and you will be given an uh, option which room you are going to go. Okay, we have 10 groups. Eh? After this, I will show to you. Okay. Uh, and you can write your assignment on your Jamboard while discussing with your colleague. But please make sure you get back to the main room during my speech or else you are unable to listen to my voice during the training. So allow me to try to share. Uh, Zarif, can you confirm my voice very clear? Yes, sir. Your voice okay, is Thank you very much. Clear. Or anybody else uh, which uh, cannot listen to my voice, you can highlight through chat or you can raise your hand. Uh, our secretariat will help you. Uh, I'll try to share the screen. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I hope everybody. Okay, can you switch off your microphone, uh, everybody? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Zarif, can you switch off whoever uh, on the, their microphone? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I think you can see the slide of the program today. Uh, please confirm to me if you cannot see. Okay, this is uh, the tentative program for the three days. Eh? As I said to you, it's quite flexible, relaxing, because we know when you are sitting on your, at your house or in your meeting room, sometimes you need some break, cannot go continue, not like face-to-face -face training. So we will start from 9 to 10 for the first session. And then we have a break on 10 to 10.30. So for today, starting from 10.30 to 11.30, I will start with uh, introduction to SMS. And then we have another break from 11.30 to 12. So we will, uh, we will continue the speech in, uh, from 12 to 1 o'clock. I will go to explain on SMS elements, the 12 elements. And after that, we'll got a, a, a little a longer, a little bit longer break for lunch, Smayan Zoho, et cetera, from one to two. And uh, from two to 3 p.m., I will continue to share on SMS elements. And uh, the last session for today is I will touch on management of change. So I hope everybody will try to uh, focus as much as possible every word that I said, everything that I share, so that we can get benefit. Eh? So you have plenty of time to, to break, eh? to, to rehab, to tetari, etc., to walk, everything. But I have planned also, like I said before, during the break also, you can try to go into your breakout session, okay? Breakout session and try to, to go to your uh, jam board. There we have already provided the exercise for today, okay? So if... Uh, if there's nothing else, allow me to... Okay, before I forgot, this is the one that I said just now. For those who are still do not sure which group are they are in, so I've shared here, group one comprises of the Northern Airports, eh? comprises of Penang, Langkawi, Alostar, and Ipoh. I guess all of you already got your link to the Jamboard. If you don't have, please ask in the chat room. We'll try to uh, give you the link. Lah. But we, we, pre we prefer not to share the link to everybody or else somebody else uh, try to enter your group and chanting your, your jambo, etc. Okay. And group two comprises of Eastern, uh, uh, from the uh, east, east Coast of the airports, Kota Baru, Terengganu, Kuantan. Eh? So please make sure you have already got your Jamboard link there. We've already pasted the exercise for today, but don't do it now because now you have to concentrate on my speech. Okay. Group three, uh, we have decided call Kokelai A, Subang, and MSBHQ. Eh? So please go to the group three. Lah. And group four, we designed for Senai Airport and also Fakerti Airport. Group five for all uh, airports from Sarawak, including Tanjung Manis. Eh? Please make sure you go to that group if we have uh, group discussion. And group six, uh, all airports from Sabah. And group seven, participant from Silmax. Group eight, from Total Abangat. 
group 9 from ASPA, not to forget group 10, my colleague from CAM, or maybe uh, our colleague from CAM uh, at traffic management also can go in this, in this group. If you still have the link, you know the link, please uh, ask Zarif on the chat box. Eh? Okay, I think uh, allow me to continue put on my next uh, presentation. Okay, uh, Zarif, please help me to switch off some of the microphone. Okay. If anybody uh, have experience uh, attend my training SMS, I always start with SMS is easy eh? because uh, I want to prove that SMS is actually easy. Before that, allow me to switch off my uh, my face. You just concentrate on my uh, slide. Eh? Hold on. Okay, so that we can save bandwidth. Okay, you can see. So like I said before, I always start my uh, training with SMS is easy. Uh, then only we will climb the, the, the ladder, the, the stairs, okay? What is SMS? This little girl asked, huh? what is SMS? Is it so difficult? Back in 2007, when the requirement of SMS come to this country, to the rest of the world, we feel it very difficult. Same like now also, I think uh, some of us who, who are still new in SMS, we still think that SMS is quite difficult. So I will try as much as possible during this training to show you that it is not actually that, uh, that difficult. So it, at the end of this three days training, if you find the SMS is not that difficult, so I have successful to prove to you that SMS is not that difficult, okay? So this Professor Sabato says that, no, I'll prove it. Okay, this professor will prove how SMS is not that difficult. So we take uh, the first example. Eh? I have several examples. Assalamualaikum, Haji. Slide tak nampak. Oh, ya yeah, ke? Ya. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Eh? Oh, dah hilang, Haji. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thank you for alerting. Siapa tu? Suara macam kenal dia. Zabidi je. Zabidi, thank you Zabidi. Ui. Ah ini breakfast apa Zabidi? Ah biasalah Kelantan nasi Raji. <laughs> <laughs> Aduh, Haji sihat ya? Alhamdulillah. Sorry ya, ada sedikit anilah iklan lah biasalah YouTube ada iklan sekarang. Okay, thank you. So I hope you understand eh? I'm alone in this room so nobody remind me. <laughs> so please remind me. Okay, can you see it? Confirm, Zarif? Can you confirm? Uh, yes, Haji. Okay, confirm, Zarif ni betul pemalu eh. Walaupun dia sekretari, dia tak nak cakap. Uh, Haji, tak nampak slide? Uh, okay, Zarif, lepas ni jangan pemalu sangat. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, let us. So, this little girl, uh, just now you didn't see this little girl. He said that, what is SMS? Is it so difficult? So, this professor sebetul says, no. I'll prove it. They kata tak susah sangat. It's not that difficult, the SMS. Okay, to show that it's not that difficult, let us show some example. Simple example one. Okay, so there's a beautiful house here. The owner of the house is a rich man and there's a robber or burglar or thief try to rob the house. Okay, so what do we need? We definitely need so many layer of defenses, not just one, okay? Why? Because if one defense broken, we have another three. If the second layer broken, we have another two. If the third layer broken, we have another one. So rarely, very rare, very unlikely that we, we have all, all, all of us have house, we just put one defense to protect our house from being robbed, right? And, and as Muslim, of course, before sleep, we recite tiga kali ayat kursi, kan? That's the best defense. Lah. So, for example, what are the defenses? Padlock, grill, steel fence, security guard, alarm system, thick wooden door, sensor, spotlight, electric fence, CCTV, etc. So, can you see from it, 
we have many defenses to avoid a thief from entering our house and we do it daily. So this is actually a part of SMS. Eh? Our daily life already involved in SMS. Eh? So that's the last result. Some of us have got that measure. Okay. Okay, we have another simple example too. This is Mars. Before this, I put the example of Earth. Now I want to change into Mars. Okay, imagine it's a fiction only. Eh? Uh, disclaimer, it's a fiction only. There's a big rock or meteor in the path of entering and hitting the mass. This is just fiction. Okay, but as a neighbor, the people of planet of Earth are sending not only one space shuttle, but second space shuttle. Why we send two space shuttles? To bring the dynamite or the nuclear bomb, etc. Why two? Because this is SMS. Should anything happen to one shuttle, space shuttle, we have another one. Okay. So when one this one space shuttle go to this big rock or meteor, it brings together not only one driller because they want to make a drill a big hole to to put the dynamite or the nuclear bomb inside the big rock it brings two drillers why again should anything happen to the one driller you have another one driller okay so in this case we can see there are many elements of sms is being done by the citizen of the earth right So, what happened? Mars is say thank you to the citizen of the Earth. Okay, what a simple example three. Can you see from our uh, gear, eh? automatic gear, there are many hurdles or obstacle to avoid entry into wrong transmission. This is also a part of SMS, right? And then like my old Vios car, we have push button also to avoid unintentional entry into wrong transmission. This is uh, some SMS measure that we always do when we drive our car to our office every day. Okay? Simple example four, we have a tiger. How to avoid this tiger from harming this man? We put it in, in a cage. Not enough, we put a very strong padlock and we put in the building in the zoo. And also we have some security but with a gun. Should anything happen, he will shoot the tiger. So there are many layers of defenses to prevent the tiger from attacking the man. Same concept, not only one, but many layers of defenses to avoid any harmful things from affecting the man, okay? So let us go on what is definition of SMS, okay? SMS is actually, the definition is a systematic approach to managing safety, including the necessary organization structure, accountability, responsibility, policies, and procedures. So by knowing the definition, actually we know what is SMS uh, really covering. What is the scope of SMS? If you do SMS, if you have SMS organization, you must have the necessary organizational structure. Who is the SMS manager? Who is the safety officer? Who is the uh, accountable executive? I will elaborate more after this. Don't worry. Okay. You may have, you must have somebody who is accountable. That's why we call it uh, accountable executive. Okay. And then surely there are somebody responsible for doing all the safety measures. And we have safety policies. And also we have many procedures to ensure we can implement SMS successfully in our organization. Okay. But in simple words, SMS is all about a system to manage safety. All the while from our beginning of life, we have already do safety. But in SMS, we have a system, a proper system, systematic system to manage safety. So that is what SMS is all about. Okay. So, okay, let us start with group activity. 
don't worry too much. You start your group activity at 10, not now. Okay. During break, go to your Google Jamboard dedicated for your group. Okay. I have given to you just now. Group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4, group 5. Please go to the Google Jamboard. I hope everybody have got their link. Uh, please identify five safety measures to prevent occurrences as mentioned in the Jamboard. If you can go to the, uh, you can also go to the Jamboard now. You can see already one page we have put, we have pasted the exercise for you to do. Okay. I would advise you start to do it at 10 o'clock. So the time is 30 minutes or more. Maybe you need some, uh, some more time. It's okay. There's no, there's no deadline or date time for this assignment. Uh, if you want to continue until, that's the good thing about online training. Uh, you can keep on uh, touch up the, 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 the assignment. We can see it. And I think when the group is ready, if we got time, I will share. Eh? Instead of you sharing, I, I, will, I will share the outcome of the group, uh, the, the work that you do. Okay, so that everybody can benefit. So during 10 a.m. break or next break. So try to go in your uh, group at 10 a.m. Uh, I think everybody still tak lapar lagi kan, tak ngantuk lagi. I think you can go at 10 a.m. to your group. Try to put somewhere from here. Don't worry if uh, everything kiosk there, we can uh, amend, we can update the group. Don't worry, we have all the access to all the groups, okay? So thank you. Okay, allow me to continue for my next presentation. Okay, let me share with you introduction, some introduction on SMS, okay? So, the requirement, what is the regulation, especially for a drone operator? Eh? For a drone operator, we have one regulation, namely, Civil Aviation, AO stands for Aerodrome Operation Regulation. So, if all of you are from aerodrome background, Please make sure your staff know there is a regulation called Civil Aviation Aerodrome Operation Regulation 2016. And this regulation is available on our website, CM website. So I hope every airport manager can ensure all those operation staff have access to this regulation. It's in PDF form. It's very easy for you to read. Okay. And uh, please bear in mind, we have another regulation namely civil aviation regulation only. So that one is not really related to aerodrome. So the one that I want to share in this training is civil aviation aerodrome option regulation 2016. So there is a regulation in this regulation re re related to SMS, okay? Regulation number 15 states that an aerodrome operator who maintains or operates a category one or three aerodrome shall establish same like annex eh? if they have shall it means mandatory so in this regulation aerodrome operator who maintains or operates category one or three aerodrome shall establish a safety management system so it is bounded in our regulation that all airports falls under category one or three after this i will uh, tell you what is category one and three aerodromes to establish sms or else, if airport have got no SMS, uh, it is against the regulation. Lah. And shall ensure that the safety management system is maintained, implemented, and complied with. Okay. So besides having the SMS, they must shall ensure also that the safety management system is maintained. Not only one time you do it, after that, you don't review at all your SMS. So it's not complying to this regulation. And then implementation of the SMS also mandatory and complied with. So let us see what is category one aerodrome. Category one aerodrome is government aerodrome available for use by commercial air transport aircraft. For example, KLI A, Kuching, KK, Langkawi, Kuala Terengganu, Kota Baru, etc. It is government aerodrome available for commercial air transport aircraft. And we have another category three which is private aerodrome available for use by commercial air transport aircraft. For example, that I can think of is our uh, Kerti Airport and also our Tanjung Manis Airport. It's a private aerodrome available for use by commercial air transport aircraft. So under this regulation, 
all this apps, whether it's category one or three, you shall have a SMS in place. Eh? It's a mandatory requirement. Okay, under NX19 standard, we have clause 4.1.9, the SMS of an operator of a certified aerodrome. A little bit different with our local requirement, which is IQ wants that anytime, every time you have uh, your aerodrome is certified, you must have SMS. You shall have SMS. It means that SMS of an operator of a certified aerodrome in accordance with NX14 Volume 1 shall be made acceptable to the state responsible for the aerodrome certification. So as you all know, for airports, we have uh, 20 airports we already certified. So by right, all the airports according to NX19 shall be shall have SMS in place. But not to forget, we also have many helidex, eh, which is already certified. So also, every helidex must have SMS implementation at your helidex. Okay, you understand? Eh? So according to NS19, all okay. certified aerodrome must have SMS, including airports and helidex. Okay, this is the front page of our NX19 safety management. So the latest uh, version that I have now is second edition, July 2016. Okay, safety management. Okay. Okay, what is the content of NX19? Let me share a little bit. Chapter one tells about definitions. Okay, you can read the definition chapter one. Chapter two tells about applicability and Chapter three tells about state safety management responsibility, SSP. And chapter four tells about safety management system. So which chapter we should focus in the next 19? We should know that for SSP is for regulator or for the state. Or in Malaysia, the state, the regulator is uh, CEM. Lah. For aerodrome, CEM, aerodrome standard division for a traffic management, the regulator is CAM uh, Inspectorate ATS Division, and for Flight Ops, it's uh, Flight Operation Division. For Airworthiness, is CAM Airworthiness Division. So don't worry if you are a service provider or airport operator, you are not supposed to know about Chapter 3. It's okay for you to know, but you are not required to know. Okay, But the one that you need to know is on Chapter 4. Because chapter four, SMS is for service provider. The aerodrome operators, the air traffic service, the airlines, the maintenance organization. So all of them must know in chapter four. And as a regulator, we must know both. Why? Because SSV, we have to conduct it. We are the one who have conduct. And SMS, we are the one who have to audit the SMS implementation. So for regulator, we have to know both chapter three and four. While for service provider, you need only to know chapter four. So I hope if you have got time after this, try to get this uh, document from your manager or management and try to read chapter four. Okay. So in chapter four, it states that the SMS of a service provider shall A, be established in accordance with the framework elements contained in appendix two. Roughly, I will share after this appendix two. Ni apa? Appendix 2 tells about all those 12 elements. So in my next slide, don't worry. I will go one by one. What are the elements that required by IQ? If you have, you say you have SMS, there are 12 elements. I will go one by one, the elements after this. Okay. So the, the SMS also further be commensurate. Commensurate ni apa maksudnya? Commensurate ni must make it suitable. If you have big airport, your SMS is big. If you're a small airport, your SMS is small. So it means, like for example, uh, Lahat Datu Airport. SMS in Lahat Datu not necessarily have to be same with the one SMS in KLIA. That's why IQ wants your SMS to be common shared. There's no one should fit all. But, uh, some sort like that. Okay. So it must common shared with the size of the service provider and the complexity of its aviation product or services. That's why when I always go for audit the airport, I want the SMS at your airport commensurate. It. Make it suitable to your airport. Eh? You don't have to follow same standard like in KLIA. 
But if I go to Kila A, the SMS is like Lada 2, I will give you finding lah, of course, kan? because you are very complicated airport. So this is what they mean, the meaning of this clause. Eh? The SMS of the service provider must be commensurate with the size of the service provider and the complexity of the exhibition product or services. When talk about service provider, you know, eh? aerodrome operator, service provider, airline service provider, maintenance organization, service provider, air traffic services, also service provider. Okay. Remember, chapter four is for service provider. So 4.1.2, 4 the state shall ensure that the service provider develops a plan to facilitate SMS implementation. That's why we, the regulator, state means regulator, we have to ensure all of you implement SMS as what is being expected by IQ. Clear? So here, IQ says that service provider's role is the one in 4.1.1 and the state role is 4.1.2. Remember, eh, service provider, the airlines, airport operator, uh, ATS, uh, ATS service, uh, maintenance organization, etc. while the state is all those regulator, CM airport standard, CM flight ops, CM uh, ANS inspectorate, etc. Okay. Okay, these are the one that I said just now. IQ want us to have SMS like this. Eh? We have 12 elements. Don't worry, I will go one by one so that everybody is sure. So, so if you say that you have SMS, uh, Haji, we already got SMS in our airport, in our holiday, etc. Okay, fair enough. Can you show me what are the 12 elements? So it means you must ensure you have 12 elements. Tak kisah if you are you are ATS ke, you are uh, ground handler ke, you are operator. According to IQ, you must have at least this 12 element, which I will go one by one. But the good news is, if your airport already certified with SMS, etc., you have already got all this. So the next stage is for you to understand what is the 12 element. I can say to you, the 12 element is clearly mentioned in your SMS manual. So please go back to your work, to your airport after this. Make sure you ask your boss, uh, your manager, uh, Tuan manager, can you show me the SMS manual? I want to see where are the 12 elements that I need to implement in our airport like that. Okay, please make sure. Eh? So these are the 12 elements, very important. But according to IQ, which are the elements which is the most important thing? Uh, do you have any idea? So actually, these are the most important elements which falls under the scope of uh, safety risk management, component of safety risk management. Under that, they have two elements, hazard mitigation and safety risk assessment and mitigation. Don't worry because on the second day, I will share details on how to do hazard mitigation and safety risk assessment and mitigation. So in the first uh, stage eh? in the beginning time when we start to implement SMS in Malaysia, I think in Malaysian aerodrome around 2007, if I'm not mistaken. So I concentrate more on this element because according to IQ, this is the most important element. So Alhamdulillah, we managed to start with uh, this high rank, this high integration and safety assessment. So it means that if you say your organization has SMS, I will ask, do you have safety risk management? Uh, that one not yet. Lah. So it means you don't have yet SMS in place. Uh, because according to IQ, these are the most important elements. Same also, if your staff says that, oh, we are already well versed in SMS. Okay, very good. But we, when we interview them, ask about safety risk management, the hazard integration, the safety risk assessment, etc. Uh, that one, I still uh, still in the beginning of my learning. Lah, sir. Uh, belum lagi lah tu. Okay. So take this opportunity during this three days training for you to familiarize eh, these elements. Okay. So we have very one important document. It's quite thick, but it's very beneficial. But as you know, it is in English and the letters are very small. Banyak Shakespeare punya type of uh, karangan. So it's quite difficult for us to go through. But I would advise us to go through. Eh? Especially we take whatever we want to learn, 
because in this doc 9859 i hope you can see the number okay of course you can see the picture is very is very beneficial in terms of the content is touch many things about sms so please make sure when you go back to your office ask your boss can i have a soft copy of this document doc 9859 smm safety management manual this is where many things about sms that you need to practice is being provided here yeah. so the latest in our record is fourth edition 2018 so i would like to inform you when eh, according to my experience the strange thing about this manual is the first edition is very different with the second edition the second edition is different with the third edition and the fourth edition quite different with the one two three edition so it's okay so we just take the fourth edition i guess uh, the fifth edition it will be different so we just leave with it lah, okay but please take an uh, opportunity to, to get this document with your uh, superior management or for Malaysia Airport. Try to ask Cik Badria ke, Cik Tarmizi ke for this document. And this document is very helpful in terms of SMS. Okay. Okay. The concept of safety. I want to share, share a little bit the theory, all this theory thing. Previous uh, SMS training, I would like to go deeper. But this time, I would like to go a little bit more on hands on. But I'll touch a little bit on concept of safety. What is safety? Is it zero accident? Sometimes we go to the factory, we can see, oh, this factory have zero accident. We target end of 2021, zero accident. Or maybe zero serious accident. So we are already safe. Okay. Is it freedom from danger or risk? Maknanya zero danger, zero risk. I always ask uh, airport operator, how to make sure our airport is zero risk, zero danger? By by closing your airport operation lah. so zero risk zero danger but is it okay for us to close our airport operation no kan so definitely there's no such thing as zero risk or zero danger okay error avoidance every time we see error we say oh you got you got to be punished because why you are not permitted to do error no it's not like that because people tends to make error okay or oh, regulatory compliance of course, if you ask us CAM, of course, we want you to comply with our regulation. Kan? But we are aware sometimes it's quite difficult for you to comply 100%. But in an SMS, if you have something that is very difficult for you to comply, we are taught to do something. For example, we for any non-compliance, for example, eh, but I will, I will share with you on my third day. If you have any non-compliance, for example, instead of you have three meters marking width, you have 2.7 meters and it's very difficult for you to go for three meters so that's a uh, something that you can do like you said that you can do safety assessment eh? so i will touch on safety assessment on the third day that's why all these three day training very important i hope everybody can allocate your time to concentrate on this all the three day training eh? so safety assessment for example there's some airport very difficult for you to get a result of minimum 90 meters. Okay. So I, I don't say that it's okay, but while waiting for it to be okay, <laughs> please do safety assessment. <laughs> while waiting for it to be okay, please do Of course, if you have got opportunity, make it okay. <laughs> but while waiting for it to be okay, please do safety assessment. Okay. Some airport, you, you are, your, your, your runway is not flush to the right, right and left side of your, your runway again. You know, flush, but the flush, flush is a requirement. Eh? But while waiting for the, your, the whole runway to be flush, please conduct safety assessment. Okay. okay. Some airports are not complying with the apron marking uh, requirement. Okay. Some, some of the operation aircraft are uh, still uh, operating on your apron without marking. As much as possible, I will ask you to comply with the requirement. But while waiting for the requirement to be complied, you are required to conduct safety assessment. So this is what IQ expecting under SMS. It means that not, not, not necessarily you can uh, langgar all those uh, requirements, but while waiting for the requirement to be fully complied, you are required to conduct safety assessment. So please bear with me on my third day, inshallah. I will share on the safety assessment. I hope by at the end of this training, three days training, every time we do uh, uh, audit on your airport, okay, conduct safety assessment. 
Oh, very easy, Haji. Split second. I can complete by one hour. Not like now. Lah. Uh, why, eh, Haji? I need to conduct city assessment. So uh, I hope after these three days, Haji, tonight I will give you the city assessment. <laughs> okay, I hope uh, everybody can do that. Eh? So concentrate on my third day. Eh? Jangan tidur. Lah. Okay. Definition of safety. Just now, uh, this is the wrong uh, understanding on safety. But this is the definition of safety, recent definition. This is also the habit of IQ. Always changing definition, but we take the latest definition. So the latest definition of uh, safety in NX19 is the state in which risk associated with aviation activities related to or in direct support of the operation of aircraft are reduced and controlled to an acceptable level. It's not we zero the risk, okay? It's not we zero the error. It's not we zero the danger, that kind of thing. Because if we want to zero the risk, zero the danger, zero the error, uh, don't operate airport lah kan? Like for example, we drive a car every day to our house. How come there's zero risk, zero danger, zero error? We always driving. But according to this definition is to reduce, eh? to reduce and control to an acceptable level. It means that you wear, when you drive, you wear uh, safety seat belt. Uh, it's good for your car to have uh, airbag. Uh, it's good your car is being uh, tested for uh, all those uh, alignment, etc. So that's what it mean. For on your airport pula, it's, it's good, it's not good, it's necessary, it's mandated for your runway is dully calibrated for friction test, for example, that kind of thing. So this is actually not to make the risk zero, to push down, to reduce the risk as low as possible, okay? But if your airport haven't done a friction test for the past five years, it's not acceptable lah, because you are not doing effort to reduce the risk to an acceptable level. So acceptable in terms of to make sure your runway is not slippery, is regularly you have to do friction test. Regularly you have to repaint your, especially your center line marking, etc. Yeah? So that is what IQ means by safety, is you have to make effort to reduce and control the risk to an acceptable level. So understand, eh? not to make it zero, but to reduce to an acceptable level. Okay. Safety says the type. Airline says that in this airline, safety is first. ATC said, in this ATC unit, safety is first, is it? Airport operator always said, in this airport, safety is first. Really? Is it really safety is first? We always see in the factory, ke, on the way to our office, that's Kelang. Uh, safety is first. <laughs> okay, but in SMS, actually, safety not really the first. Okay, let us see the Dutching of safety. Yeah? So this is a management dilemma. Even though all of the management really wants to, to make the safety first, but bear in mind, eh, you have to balance between protection and production. Eh? Should your production more, it means that you keep on want to have more revenue, more money, more production. So the result will be catastrophe. If there's a company want to save a lot, eh, save, save, save. Uh, sorry, sorry. Not to save a lot, want to protect more. Highly protection mind. Uh, the marking is being repainted every day. Uh, so that's why it must be balanced between protection and production. So that's essentially the management dilemma. So after this, can we say again, like we listened before, safety is first, not really. You must balance between protection and production because if you think about money, 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 revenue, 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 it may go to catastrophe. But if you say safety, 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 your company can go to bankruptcy. For example, an airline, if you want to make sure uh, the, your aircraft is safe, can mm -hmm. it change the tire, the gears every day? <laughs> can lah, yeah? very safe. But 
one day the airline will bankrupt lah uh, macam tu okay so from this you can see you can see accidents clearly but the number is not that many serious incident you cannot that see but it's still key a little bit sometimes you see and the number is more than accident but normal incident is more than serious incident but it is more you cannot see it and the most difficult thing you want to detect is on latent condition something that waiting for something to happen eh? retak menanti belah so this is many this is many occurrences in our environment airport etc etc latent condition which we do, if we do not tackle latent condition can become incident incident if you not tackle how to tackle incident if there is an incident you have to do safety investigation etc don't worry on the third day i will uh, share with you how to conduct safety investigation and if safety incident uh, Uh, done without being conducted safety investigation, it may lead to serious incident. And if serious incident uh, is not being tackled properly, it may lead to accident. For example, some of our airport, there are many ground incident. Eh? Uh, this uh, car hitting the wall, lah, hitting the lights, lah, hitting our PBB, lah, hitting our stairs, lah, the car. Eh? Okay, lah, people can say, Alaji, this one incident not serious. Lah. But remember, according to this theory, if this if this incident is not being tackled properly, one day that car can contribute to serious incident. That car might go to the taxiway. Ah, taxiway incursion. Okay, now my lagi still taxiway incursion. What? No, no, not related to aircraft. Fair enough. If you do not tackle the competency of the car driver, if you are not tackle about the condition of maintenance of the vehicles. We are afraid one day it will contribute to accident, which is runway incursion. It's already happened in our country. So actually, any 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 time an accident, major serious accident happening, actually it is new or connected to previous latent condition. It's not being tackled properly. Incident is not being tackled properly. Become serious incident is not being tackled properly, and one fine day it's already happened to become serious accident. So by that time, it's already too late. So SMS is all about tackling the latent condition first to avoid latent condition to become incident. And then when you have incident, you have to do safety investigation, lah. You have to do post mortem, lah. That kind of thing, eh? Before it contribute to serious incident. And when serious incident, you must tackle it more properly to avoid it from become accident. So that is SMS, eh? So okay. Under SMS, there are three uh, division, which we call the first. The first one is VFT safety management, or the papata is sudah sudah jatuh uh, apa ni? Uh, apa papata ada tu? Uh, saya pun tak ingat. Sudah jatuh di tempat tangga. <laughs> sudah jatuh di tempat tangga ya, bukan bukan. Uh, dah terantuk baru tengah dah. Ah, okay. <laughs> dah terantuk baru tengah dah. Okay, it means that accident already happen. So it's related to investigation of accident and serious incident, based upon the notion of waiting until something breaks to fix it. So this is conventional way of doing SMS. It means that okay, fair enough, nothing happened. Let okay, as long as nothing happened, we are safe. After something happened, we do investigation. It's okay, uh, but it's already a little bit too late. But please bear in mind, uh, <laughs> there's some case also when happen accident, we don't do do investigation properly. So that is not reactive safety management. That is worse than reactive safety management. So reactive safety management still need to be done, eh? even though it's already too late. But it still need to be done. Okay. So investigation of accident and serious incident, based upon the notion of waiting until something breaks to fix it. Maknya we wait, we wait for it. Okay. After accident, okay. Now we investigate. What are do the do and the don'ts? What are the safety recommendation? Still, you need to do it. Eh? Most appropriate for situation involving failures in technology. Sometimes we do not know the failure in technology unless something happen. Okay, then we say, oh, okay, the tire ni by that not to be used uh, 100 times. It should be used uh, 80 times, for example, like that. Okay, uh, friction test maybe. Oh, okay, the technology is not that advanced. We must have to reduce the mu number. That's that kind of thing. Okay, the lights. Oh, this light is not uh, as bright as being expected by the pilot, for example. Okay. Unusual event, something which not being expected. So how can you expect something? Uh, so it happened. Then only we know. Okay, 
this is something hazardous, so we need to tackle this problem. So this is what we call reactive safety management. The next one is what we call proactive safety management. This is a little bit better than uh, and the, the, the reactive safety management. Okay. So the pepatah is sediakan payung sebelum hujan lah. Before you hujan already, sediakan payung. Mandatory and voluntary reporting system, safety audit survey. You see that? Before, before happen, no accident, no incident, but you do mandatory and voluntary reporting system. You do safety audit. After that, I will go a little bit uh, detail on what uh, safety audit survey, etc. Okay. Based upon the notion that system failure can be minimized by, not to avoid it, but minimized by identifying safety risk within the system before it fails, taking necessary action to reduce such risk. Okay, so this is all the high rate, that's that kind of thing. And the third one, okay, I will have to inform, eh? the third one, ni, uh, previously IQ says there is that one, but recently I read from IQ document, only have two. So I think they combine the predictive with the proactive. So never mind, we just learn what is the predictive. Competition reporting system, flight data analysis, normal operation monitoring, based upon the notion that safety management is best accomplished by looking for trouble, not waiting for it. Maknanya kita find for the trouble. Okay, aggressively seek information from a variety of sources which may be indicative of major safety risk. It means that collecting data. The data, data is not yet uh, related to, to accident incident but collecting. But under recent uh, documentation or IQ, I've monitored that they have combined eh, both predictive and proactive safety management. But it's okay. As long as we know what are the uh, reactive, what is the proactive, what is the predictive. But after this, we bear in mind the predictive is being combined with the proactive safety management. Okay. So these are the components of SMS. After this, if people ask you, okay, fair enough, you have gone for training, SMS training, can you say to me what are the components of SMS? So please remember, there are four components of SMS. Eh? What are the components of, uh, of SMS? Is safety policy objective safety risk management, safety assurance, safety promotion. These are the four components of SMS, okay? And under these four components, there are 12 elements of SMS like I said before. So under the first component, there, there are five elements, which is management commitment, safety account. Don't worry, the next slide I will go one by one, okay, documentation. Under the second component, there are two elements, the most important elements. So remember, eh, you must know the, the, the difference between component and elements. SMS have four components, 12 elements. Ingat, eh? Four components, 12 elements. So under the first component, there are five elements. Under the second component, they have two elements. Under the third component, safety assurance, they have three elements and after uh, under the safety promotion component they have two elements so remember if you uh, if somebody asks you what are the elements of sms there are 12 elements of sms you don't need to memorize it you just print it and paste it on your wall of your office maybe or put in the diary and what are the components all those four so thank you very much i think we got the time correct 10 o'clock so I hope everybody can uh, understand so far. Uh, remember, uh, please be ready. We are going to climb stairs after this. Kita start dengan gear satu. <laughs> Next is gear dua. Now take your rest, take your tetare, oxygen ke, kemaruku ke, or you can have a check opportunity to go into your group. Okay? Please uh, uh, go into the chat room. Uh, I mean, the chat, if, if you have any difficulties. So, inshallah, my staff will entertain eh? Maybe some of you still do not know why the link to be connected. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see at 10.30. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ji. Welcome.